A packed airplane crashed on purpose, killing everyone on board. It's a revelation, revelation rather, that is hard for most of us to even believe. But a French prosecutor says the co-pilot of that doomed German Wings airplane crashed it intentionally. Now investigators are trying to figure out why. They say cockpit voice recordings make it clear 28-year-old Andreas Lubitz wanted to destroy the plane. And they say they can hear the pilot of that plane pounding on the cockpit door, locked outside, and trying to get inside. Many passengers may not have even known their plane was about to crash into the French Alps. The crash brings up a lot of questions. Most importantly, what kind of requirements are in place to try to prevent something like this from happening? Our Steve Pickett went out in search for some answers, and he joins us live with what he found. Steve. One example quickly here is making sure two people a requirement. At all times, two people here in the U.S. on commercial flights must be in the cockpit. That is a way specialists say to prevent, prevent something of this magnitude from happening. However, they also add someone bent on doing it, it doesn't matter. The rules are different, but the outcomes may not be. There is no airtight, 100% perfect way to do this. Denny Kelly is a seasoned aviation specialist. The question I think that we're going to start to see now and, we're, and people are asking now is what do you do ongoing? Ken Jenkins has spent years responding to the needs of airline crash victims and their families. U.S. safety regulations require two people always in the cockpit of a commercial flight. There is also psychological screenings conducted by some airlines. But trying to gauge the motives and actions of a troubled pilot may not always be seen, according to Kelly. This is not the first time this has happened, and nothing really was done. There's nothing you can do. You cannot look into somebody's head and see how they're going to react to certain stresses. Jenkins believes more assessment of pilots is now on the way. I think what we're going to see as we move forward is a redesign of those psychological factors being measured going forward. And already today, reports indicate that airline, Air Canada, and at least two other European airlines changing their policies on requiring those two individuals must be in that cockpit. If it's not two pilots, at least one other professional on that, air, on that airplane should be in that cockpit. Already a change as a dynamic of what we've seen from this tragedy. Reporting live, Steve Pickett, CBS 11 News.